Hello Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Given that the nation is going into the third wave of this terrible pestilence, I've decided I'm going to go back to making a video every day to give us something fun to look forward to rather than having to hear the same old dreary news on, uh, on television. And so I'm going to try and make a video every day. Let's see what we can do. Today's is a very simple one about a very simple accessory that without you might have some pretty terrible problems and with it's problem solved. Now, here is the problem. Let's suppose that we have a coax, okay, and we can't quite reach to the antenna. We need another piece of coax in here, okay? How do we do that? Well, if you're doing things like uh, DXing or really into super weak signal work or stuff like that, the answer is to make another coax that's longer. But for you and me, ordinary hams, there's a much easier answer, and it's called the barrel connector. That's this right here. It's got a female, in other words, an SO239 on this end, and another one on this end. And it makes it very easy to plug your coax into here, and then get a little bit longer piece of coax and plug it into the other end like this. Now these connectors, like I said, if you've got one in your uh, toolbox, you're in good shape when you run into this situation. If you don't, you're not. Now the SO239s almost universally, I'm sorry, coax cable almost always ends in a male plug. This is a PL259, it's a crimp type connector here. It is rare, but there are some cases where you can get, you'd have to order these special usually, you can get them with the SO239 and then this can go directly onto this. Now you see this fairly often in uh, VHF mobile rigs where uh, the connector on the back is a little pigtail. Sometimes it has an SO239, sometimes it has a PL259. If it's a PL259, you have to use the barrel connector to connect another cable to it. But if it's an SO239 like this, you can screw into it directly. That, that latter is becoming a little bit more common. But these little barrel connectors are uh, definitely uh, very, very helpful. Now, uh, questions arise uh, from this. First of all, how much do these cost? And the answer is that you can pay almost anything for them. Here is a picture of the one from uh, the Amazon web page, which I think is probably this very connector right here. Um, you know, about $3.50 for each connector. And then you can go the other way. If you want to go for the really good ones, the silver plated ones, you can go to the uh, DX Engineering, and here are some Amphenol connectors. Note the price difference. It's almost, uh, well, it's a factor like five uh, or six or something like that. And so it is uh, a good idea to have several in stock in case one doesn't work. They're, they're incredibly simple. The, the outside is just a little barrel. And the inside you can actually see through, okay, and that's for the, the uh, connector. Now note, when you make a connection with these, that they are not, repeat, not waterproof. Okay, so you have to cover the whole thing with waterproof tape uh, if you're going to have the thing outside. They are very convenient. Um, it depends on what you're doing, but I think... Uh, you know, unless you're doing something exotic, um, I would recommend the less expensive connectors. Get several of them, because uh, one, they're so small, they're easy to lose. And second, uh, they just really come in handy when you need them for some temporary something or other. You may decide to go back and uh, replace it with a longer piece of coax or whatever you do. Now, I will note that when you bring your coax 
into the house from out in the backyard and you go past that lightning uh, surge protector down by your ground rod, you're going to be plugging in two ends. And so there's, uh, uh, it's a lightning arrestor is like this, except that it has um, the lightning arrestor part in here. So there is a little impedance bump. Um, that's the problem with these connectors is that there is an impedance bump where they connect. They're not like end connectors, which don't have the impedance bump. Now I want to show you that impedance bump. We're going to look at uh, uh, two pieces of coax here. Okay, I've got them. One is uh, going to my uh, heat kit dummy load. Okay. Um, and uh, the other end, I've got my little uh, MFJ 259B uh, for testing uh, for um, uh, to see what happens to SWR when you put these things in line. Now these are short pieces of coax. And so what I'm going to do is, if I were to test this at HF, I mean the difference in lengths and all of that would hardly be noticeable. So I'm going to go up to, this is a piece of coax about that, that long. And um, so uh, we're going to try this at two meters because at two meters, these are pieces of cable that are a significant fraction of a wavelength. And we'll be able to see the slight effect that having this barrel connector has on the SWR. Now, first though, before we do that, let's do HF. Okay, and I'm gonna connect this so that this from the SWR meter goes straight into the uh, antenna connector, okay? And I'm gonna turn on this and we're going to go to seven, seven megahertz. Okay, there's the uh, 40 meter band right there. And you'll look at it and note that the dummy load has a 1.0 SWR all the way across the band, which it should, it's a dummy load. Okay, now let's take this off of here. Okay, I'm going to attach another piece of coax here. Okay. And then I'm going to put the barrel connector in here. And connect that over here. Now these are pretty short pieces of coax, so it's a pretty small fragment. Now let's look at the SWR across the 40 meter band. It's still 1.0. That barrel connector in that line makes no difference at all to SWR. The reflections in the RF that you get from this, and you do because it's an impedance bump, are not enough to affect the SWR on HF. The story is different on VHF. Let's go ahead and take this extra piece of coax out. I've had this dummy load since I was a, a general class ham way back in ancient times. Back when Heathkit was a thing. It really was. Okay, now I'm going to turn this up to two meters, we're gonna go up to two meters. Okay, now this is just the one piece of coax in the antenna, let's go across two meters, 144. Okay, all the way up here to 148, it's a 1.2 SWR. Okay, 1.2 SWR. Now let's put in the barrel connector. So tell me, what do you think? Are we going to see a huge difference or are we going to see no difference at all? You know, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm not much into horror films, so I'll tell you the secret. We're not going to see much of a difference, even at VHF. Okay, now let's go back down to the bottom of two meters, 1.2. 
Okay, there's the bottom, 1.2, 1.2, up to 147, and 148. No change. No difference. Nothing. I did a previous test where I did get the SWR to go from 1.1 to 1.2 at 2 meters. That is such a small difference it's not worth bothering with. So can you use these barrel connectors even at VHF? Absolutely you can. Now is it ideal to have a single piece of coax between your lightning arrestor and your antenna? Yes it is. Uh, if you start putting a lot of these in you start getting cumulative effects of uh, this and the problem of course uh, there is a tiny bit of resistance in these things so you lose a very 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 tiny bit of signal but um, not enough to bother with and the change in SWR of having this inserted in line is negligible so what does that mean for us that means that the beautiful little barrel connector you uh, <laughs> I use this so often in the test setups that I actually leave this sitting right over here on the base of the lamp. So there you are. We've looked at the barrel connector. Now I warn you that lots and lots of things are called barrel connectors. And going into ham radio outlet or DX engineering or gigaparts or someplace like that and asking for a barrel connector, you might get a blank stare because there's a bunch of different kinds. The little power connectors that go into a lot of things are also called barrel connectors. What you want is UHF connectors on each end. These are SO239. You want SO239 to SO239 and a barrel connector and that is this right here. Okay and I showed you the one on Amazon. I showed you the one on DX Engineering. So you've got part numbers that you can look for there. By the way, can you get these longer? Uh, you can get them up to about six inches long. So you can use them as wall throughs <laughs> if you need to. They actually work quite well at that. So there you have it. That is the barrel connector. Please subscribe and please click like. And please tell others about these videos too. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to try and do one every day during this uh, third wave of our um, pestilence that is sweeping the land. Uh, so far, my wife and I have been safe, but we are learning of more people that we know who, are, who have been smitten by this. And, and our heart goes out to all those among all of you who have run into that problem. We also understand that there's a lot of economic damage uh, to that. And so I'm just going to recommend the one thing I can. Turn on your radio and talk to somebody. Don't sit there by yourself. Talk to somebody. Get on the air and chat. It's not quite being there, but for us hams, when we're talking to somebody halfway across the continent, it's close. Please check out uh, dcastler.com support for ways that you can help fund this channel and very, very much appreciate those who have done that. There are many different ways of doing it and uh, it is greatly appreciated. It allows me at this point that I don't have to go to manufacturers and beg for something. I can just buy it and I can give um, a uh, much better review that way. So until we next meet, to all of you, 73.